Hi guys, and welcome back to the second episode of Viking Reefer Reacts. Today we are having a look at Chris's, aka the Dry Reefs, insanity of a reefing setup. This is basically what happens when a very talented reefer completely lose all manner of self-control and just go ham. Now, a very cool system that I've personally been following for some time because Chris is doing some very cool stuff and I can't wait to see how this system develops over time. And if you didn't get enough of this system after this video, Chris also runs a Instagram channel with a criminally low amount of followers. Um, I will put his Instagram handle down in the description, so go in and give him a follow. As I said, this is a very nice reefing setup. Um, he has tons of flow. His uh, tank turnover is over a hundred times an hour. Uh, it's run by a closed loop and some tonsy pumps. With that amount of flow, he wrote that he shifts uh, the sand bed weekly. And you can see on the far side there, there's a big pile of sand. Uh, personally, with this amount of uh, turnover, with this being an SPS tank, I would probably advise Chris to do what I did and just go bare bottom. It won't look as good, but you'll save yourself a lot of hassle. But I mean, this system just looks freaking great. Look at this peninsula tank. It's well, everything around the cabinetry is well built. It looks super freaking sleek. And he also has several big colonies, which I am very partial for. Not a lot of super small frags. And in my opinion, the lighting looks extremely aesthetically pleasing as well. Um, in a lot of times when I look at uh, tanks from the US, they are extremely windexy, just blue. But I think he has a very nice balance of color, pop and everything going on. Uh, he also has several large tanks, which I really, really like. It gives a lot of life to the uh, tank in and of itself. And now we are inside the equipment room having a look. As you can see, it has several auto fleet feeders here. Um, looks like, is that a Neptune Systems auto feeder perhaps? Something that just jumped out at me is that I'm not liking those big piles of sand. Uh, if Chris is not moving those around, it could create an issue down the line with crap detritus and like hydrogen sulfide and stuff. And he has some beautiful SPS colonies, as I said. Also a couple of softies, which is kind of surprising with the amount of light he has, he's running. I guess they can probably handle it being acclimated. If I remember correctly, this system hasn't been set up for that long. Just imagine in a couple of years the amount of uh, <laughs> coral mass that there will be in this system. Um, personally, I would probably have placed the colonies a bit further apart because I can just see huge problems with coral warfare down the line. Chris also sent in a very detailed overview of the system. Um, he runs his nutrients at around 6 for nitrates and 0 0.8 for phosphate, uh, which is quite impressive since he also feeds 12 times a day, a man of my own heart. Um, freaking foodings like that is key to keeping health efficient, in my opinion. Um, he runs his uh, KH at 9.4, his calcium at uh, 420, and magnesium at 1400. The supplementation of uh, calcium and acolamide is done by a calcium reactor, which, as we all know, has a tendency to suppress pH, uh, but Chris manages to keep his pH around 8.55 for most of the day, and he managed to achieve this by dosing sodium hydroxide if the pH uh, drops below 8.5, and sodium bicarb if it's over 8.5. And now we are getting into the really nutty stuff. So Chris has eight XR13s over this tank, um, four blues and four pros with the high intensity lenses, which basically just focuses the light. He also runs four metal halides with uh, radium bulbs. I would guess that's 20K bulbs or something like this. And he also has a bunch of T5s, uh, which are uh, consisting of KC Core Plus and ATO Blues. This is how reef tank lighting is to, supposed to be done. Freaking awesome, man. But that amount of wiring, it's even worse than my sump room. 
and how many Neptune systems dose is Chris is running. Well, all of them, I guess. And here you can also see some of his additional supplementation, which is Acropower, Tropic Marin A and K, which incidentally I'm also running. Um, he has started dosing Captivate, and he will probably phase out the A and K when he's done with that. He's also dosing Ammonia. And oh my god, look at that leafing <laughs> wall of madness. I'm guessing he has one Red Sea Roller mat for his main display and perhaps one for the low boy on the left. Um, he also has a bunch of uh, Neptun Systems gear here, tridents and everything for automatic measurements. Uh, looks like he has an Aqua with as well for uh, monitoring KH. Uh, looking at this wall, if someone hasn't had a very large tank in a sump room, Someone would probably think that, oh, that's a rat's nest of wiring and stuff like that. But honestly, when you're getting into um, having a sump room and a very large system, really neat cable management starts not being all that feasible anymore. Because if you uh, run everything in channels, for example, and you have to uh, get one channel out, you'll mess everything up. That looks like a Geos calcium reactor. Chris also wrote that it's very underpowered for his current needs, so he will be upgrading that to a real behemoth in a couple of weeks' time. The sump, I would guess, is from Royal Exclusive. The skimmer definitely is a bubble king of some sort. Um, to my eyes, it almost looks kind of small for a system this size. But you can't argue with results, and Chris is even dosing ammonia, so obviously it doesn't need a uh, bigger skimmer, currently at least. And moving over, uh, we have what I believe is his grow-out system, uh, or drag system. And man, I'm so freaking jealous, I wish I had the space in my room for a proper frag section. That would be the dream. It looks like it's powered by a couple of radions and a metal halide. Good to see that some reefers still use metal halides. I've actually been thinking that when I set up my next reef tank, that should probably be at least a part of the complete lighting solution. A place like this would also be a very good like intermediate stop for new fish coming out of quarantine, so they can kind of get used to the system, the other fish can get used to their smell, and they can just chill out in a kind of a relaxed environment. It would be a pain in the ass to catch them out though. And of course, he has a sump below it with even more corals. <laughs> and that's obviously pumped into the main sump right here. And what's going on with that pump on the top right corner? Are you using that, I think it's a tunes pump, as a like fan or something, Chris? <laughs> that's weird. And over here, I guess, is where Chris is playing mad scientists. He also sends in uh, monthly ICP tests. And here's a sneak peek of a uh, new system that Chris will be setting up. This will be a very bare bone setup. It will be bare bottom, uh, full of just acros, and the lighting will be halides and perhaps some T5s or reef brights. Uh, the focus will be uh, of a look down tank. So the focus of the system will be the top down view. Should be very cool. Chris also sent me a very detailed system description, and I didn't have enough time in the video to cover everything. Uh, so we will be posting a full breakdown in the description below as well. So what are my overall thoughts of this system? Well, the thing that impresses me the most is the lighting setup. I think Chris is completely dead on the money uh, in the way that he has set it up. He has halides, he has LEDs, and he has T5s. Not one of those kinds of lighting is perfect, but, but by adding all three to the system, I think he's getting the best of each world. You're only missing some plasma lights now. <laughs> I also love the cabinetry around the tank. I feel that a lot of people put too much focus on the tank itself and forget that it should be a beautiful piece of furniture in your home. And I think the cabinetry really complements what Chris has managed to achieve within the tank. 
overall, I'm very impressed. It's a extremely well thought out system. And you can tell that Chris has put in a lot of time and effort into building this. If uh, I were to give Chris some pointers, just from my point of view, uh, I would probably do something about those big piles of sand. I can see that as a potential risk moving forward. And honestly, with the amount of flow that Chris is uh, running through this tank and that he has to uh, push back a lot of the sand weekly, I would just bite the bullet and go bare bottom. It looks like ass, but the upsides outweigh the downsides in my opinion. Um, like I said in the previous video that I did, I would also try and get some uh, schooling fish for like the middle and top part of the tank. Um, a bunch of Antheas would look really nice in this tank. Like say that he would get 20 Vansi Antheas, for example. That would look stunning. Or if you want to do something even more exotic, I have now some purple queens in my tank and they're doing well. That would also be a very nice option. And of course, you don't have enough angels in this tank. If you have any, I haven't seen any. And in my opinion, a large angel would make a very nice centerpiece fish for this tank. If there is something wrong with you and you don't like angel fish, I would probably look into like getting a, say a Tinkeri butterfly or something would also look very cool and would, would be also less of a risk with most corals. I can see that Chris uh, is following the uh, methodology that is more common in the States where you uh, place a bunch of corals in the tank um, that looks very cool but that could also lead to problems down the line so i think that chris will have to be very much ready with his pruning scissors so he's not dealing with too much coral warfare in say a year's time but i think this is about enough out of me uh, go and give chris a follow on instagram just follow the link down below in the description happy reefing have a good one. Bye.